Father, I come before you. I humbly beg, Lord, that you give me the will, the courage, the wisdom to speak, the words that you've given me to speak. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I am nothing but the dust of the earth, and no one is beneath me. And the only thing special about me is that I am forgiven. I had a, uh, a family member recently that I was talking to about uh, the saving grace of Jesus and how he died on the cross and his blood was shed for their sins and mine. I also told them about the, the signs that were manifesting in the world right now. I told them about the Gog and Magog war that was about ready to break out at any moment. And all the players were in Syria and ready to, at a moment's notice to strike Israel. Iran was attacking ships and even American drones. I told them about the prophecy of the foxes uh, ro uh, frolicking on the uh, Temple Mount, how they have uh, been spotted near the Wailing Wall, running and frolicking, as prophesied in the Scripture Lamentations 5 and 18. I also told them about the uh, fish returning to the Dead Sea, uh, the lowest point on earth and the saltiest place on earth, as prophesied in Ezekiel 47.10. And if God said it, God would do it. And all the prophecies were being fulfilled, even the obscure forgotten prophecies in the Bible. So if God was busy fulfilling the obscure prophecies, what would be the odds that he would not fulfill the major prophecies in the Bible? Like the time of sorrows, the rapture, the time of the tribulation, and most important, the part about judging the sinners of the world, and the sinners ending up in a lake of fire for eternity. They didn't want to hear all that. What they told me was that they didn't. They didn't watch. They did not watch the news on TV, and they did not listen to news on the radio. They didn't care about the news or what happened in the world or in America, as they had no voice, and it was none of their business. And they didn't care. They said that so long as they could go to the grocery store and buy groceries, and go to the gas station and buy gas, and as long as they could sit in their recliner and watch sitcoms on their TV, they didn't care what happened in the world. And as long as it didn't interfere in their gross in their gas, their groceries and TV, it was all of no concern to them. And as far as they were concerned, for thousands of years people have been saying, had been warning about the, the signs at the end of the days, and there was there were no different they weren't different than in any other time. And those people spoke of warning signs. And there was proof. And their proof was that they could still buy groceries, and they could still buy gas, and they could still watch TV. So they were not interested in what I had to say. Basically, they said, come back when they could not buy gas, groceries, or watch TV. Well, I'm here to tell you that all that is about to change, and very soon. I told my relative that we were in the, in the time of sorrows, and that the calamities would be seen. What we have seen are only a precursor to what is coming. There will come a day when you will not be able to buy gas or groceries at any price because there will not be any food. There will come a day when you will have no electricity, so there will not be no TV, no radio, no cell phones, no heat, no air conditioning, no running water, no lights. There will be nothing. And if you have a municipal sewer system hooked up to your home, your toilet won't even flush. There will come a day that men will seem to go mad and kill for no reason at all. There will come a day when men will eat human flesh to survive, as most people will not eat bugs and worms and grass and leaves. But for some strange reason, they will become cannibals. As for them, that seems to be easier than eating bugs and grass, and worms and leaves. There will come a day when America will shoot and bomb other Americans. For America, this will become a civil war, and it will seem that everyone is fighting and hating and killing. There will come a day when foreign armies will fight on American soil, and there will come a day when nuclear weapons will be used on American soil. There will come a day when the whole Earth will shudder from an asteroid strike in the Atlantic and the subsequent tsunami that will destroy all of the East Coast of America for many, many miles inland. There will come a day when the Cascadia Fault will erupt in a massive major earthquake that will be over a 9.0 and the subsequent tsunami that, tsunami that will destroy what was left of the west coast from northern California to Canada. The earthquake will trigger the San Andreas Fault to rupture big time in a 7.6 or greater, and all of the Bay Area will be destroyed 
along with the greater Los Angeles area. There will come a day when the New Madrid fault will rupture and destroy much of the middle of America. And there will come a day when lights will go out and your cars will not start, nothing electronic will work, or electronically controlled. And that is everything from a child's calculator to your neighborhood nuclear power plant. I saw the lights go out all over America, all at the same time. And the only thing that can do this is an EMP, electromagnetic pulse weapon, which Russia and China have, probably North Korea, and Iran probably has already also. I saw volcanoes erupting all over the West. I saw Yellowstone erupt in a major eruption covering much of America in many feet of ash. I saw American money blowing down the street and people would not even stop to over and pick it up because it was worthless paper. There will come a day when the stock market collapses and the bond market crashes and the economy comes to a screeching halt. No one works as money is worthless. There will come a day when fallen angels will walk the earth and will cause total devastation to everything and everyone they come across and no weapon can harm them. And, is, and, in, and in these days also, Nephilim or giants will walk the earth, also killing and destroying everything. Many demons will be released from hell and they will possess, possess many of whom they please and they will cause these possessed people to do many unspeakable things. This was what I was shown in several dreams. I, I was shown that after the rapture, most of these possessed people will be hunting left behind Christians to slaughter them because they knew the truth, but they failed to submit to Jesus and God's will. These left behind Christians will be slaughtered for they knew the truth, but they somehow failed God. These left behind Christians will pay a terrible price for being left behind. Everyone is reduced to robbing, stealing, murdering to survive. Your gold and your silver will be worthless. You cannot eat it, and it will not keep you warm. Gold and silver hoarders, please pay attention to this. This is especially for you. As money becomes, as, as the economy declines, your gold and your silver will increase in value, but it is only temporary. When the dollar goes to zero, what will your gold be worth then? At some point, it will take all of your gold to buy a five-pound bag of beans. So the question is, in the future, who will be richer, the man with 100 pounds of gold or the man with 500 pounds of beans? I am betting on the man with the beans. At least he has something of value that he can barter with and something of value that he can eat And when there's no food available at any price. I am sorry if this offends anyone or shocks you or your sensibilities. It was not my intention to offend anyone but to open your eyes as to what is coming. It is time to prepare and your very first prep should be getting right with Jesus. If you start with your preps, start your preps with, with Jesus then you cannot go wrong. After all your preps are not for you, they are for your loved ones, the ones you are leaving behind, who refuse the truth. Those who said that I can still buy gas and groceries and I can still watch my TV. But for us who are watching, we see that the signs and we know our days on this earth are numbered. And we are heartbroken for our family that refuse to heed the call. After you talk to them and after they close you down, there's not a whole lot you can do. I guess you can pray for them, try to talk to them. Time is short. Time is very short. Right now, today, what you say and what you do is more important than you could ever imagine. I carry my Bible with me. I don't know if you can see it in the dark, but I carry my Bible with me everywhere I go. Shopping, out to restaurants, I eat everywhere I go. Because I'm not ashamed of my Lord and Savior. And I want everybody to know that I am a Christian. I pray for you all. I pray that you all come to know the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Please, 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 please. I'm nothing. I'm nobody. Jesus is the one that's important. It's the message that's important here. And the message is to get right with Jesus. To get him in your heart. To get him in your life. And to pray ceaselessly and be watching for the glorious coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I pray for you all. Amen.